Welcome everyone to the August 2023 COA US Cataloging Special Interest Group. Before I started the recording, we were chatting a little bit about things that we were reading and about comics. I'm going to put in the chat a link to something I discovered, the Complete Women's Comics, Volume 1 and 2, it's really good. Started in Berkeley and San Francisco in the 60s and 70s uh, because it was really, really hard for women to get published at that time. And uh, it's, you know, not all of it is my taste. It's an anthology comic, but I mean, the, the good stuff is fantastic. So anyway, uh, if you'd like to pop into the chat some things you're reading or enjoying, feel free to do that too. I'm going to also put into the chat links to the upcoming Koha, a Pearl and Koha conference in Helsinki in August. And I would love to go to Helsinki, but I'm not going to be able to. Uh, it's going to be hybrid, so um, folks can register for free to attend virtually. And the upcoming COHA US conference in Portsmouth, New Hampshire in September, also going to be hybrid free to attend virtually if, like me, you are unable to attend and enjoy Portsmouth, New Hampshire. And I'm also going to pop into the chat a question that came up on IRC, which I encourage everyone to check out. You can go to koha-community.org and there's a link to the chat. It is logged. It is searchable. To get there, you would go to, from the main Coho Community website, uh, you go to get the Get Involved tab and select Chat. You can join from a browser. It's really easy. This question came up. Is there a way to add the first three letters of the author's name to the call number or concatenate it from the author field and add a new mark field for it or a suggestion on the best way to handle it? I am getting mark data from open sources and I'm running it through some programs and could do it that way, but wondered what the best practice is. Add it to the call number or create a new field for it? Uh, I've seen, we don't do this in my library, but I've seen many libraries simply append to the end of the call number and the human does it upon cataloging the first three letters of what would be a filing element usually it's the author's name but if you have things like anthologies sometimes they're shelved kind of at the beginning and it would be like a n t h or a something like that, or uh, sometimes you have things like Aesop's Fables illustrated by Arthur Rackham, and the library is more interested in that going with Arthur Rackham's works, or it's more interested in going filing under Aesop. It's that's why sometimes a human gets involved. Um, a good free text call number field that I thought of was an 099. You can pretty much do anything you want in an 099. It's locally defined, but it's common, so um, systems are aware of the field. And I was thinking that perhaps this could also be handled if it were, if that filing element were in an 099 and then you had a call number field, an 050, an 090, an 082, perhaps a mark modification template upon import could could handle that somehow. Does anyone else uh, do anything like this or have any other ideas about it? Well, just reading the question <clears throat> makes me fuzzy-headed, but it Sounds like something Mark Edit could do. 
Yes. In our consortium, um, every library can assign their own call number. Um, so it's like, for most things, we have standard prefixes and uh, genre codes, so we can get collections together. Um, but there are some things like graphic novels that there was no consensus on even getting a, um, a, a prefix going. So. Some of them use GN as a prefix, some use graphics, some use comics with an X, <laughs> some use manga. So it it all depends. So it it really does take that um, human cataloger at the library because they're actually like looking at the material. They know their patrons and where their patrons are gonna find it. Um, some libraries, like especially with like the children's um, collections like with fairy tales they'll keep like the fairy like you know this is princesses or whatever so there's different files so you're exactly right it, it depends on how you're going to file it and and where your patrons go so um for the most part yeah i think mark edit would work for that um but if there is some things where it's like oh it's not always the first three and if it's a um you know there's a de space you know type of thing so there, there's all sorts of uh, you know, weird things like cataloging. It's, there's always a challenge there. <laughs> Never a dull moment. <laughs> right. <laughs> Fred's holding up. Uh, too small for my little old eyes, Fred. You're going to have to read it to us. And you're muted. Yes, I am muted. Sorry. Wow, <laughs> oh, Neko. Cutter Sanborn, three-figure author table, Swanson Swift revision, 1969. Got a little warped when uh, my office flooded, where my cubicle flooded. Still works and there, there are online tools for um, assisting with cutter Sanborn tables as well. And the Library of Congress cutter tables are freely available. You know, use your, your favorite search engine like DuckDuckGo and it will it will turn up several. Uh, this, this comic anthology I'm reading, um, the call number label has GN, then fiction, then C73771, then 2016, and it's volume two, and a graphic novels sticker. <laughs> hmm. So yeah, processing also comes in because a lot of these, uh, these stickers are just so handy and readily available to the eye, to the shelver for, yeah. I don't know, I put it in NC. But I'm just that. I'm a medical librarian cataloger. I understand W's. For special genres, I like using the shelving location and collection codes. And my elementary uh, school background comes into play stickers. <laughs> Red means nonfiction. <laughs> Blue means fiction. I can't remember what they all are, but like the stickers help you because they're not going to read the prefix. It's hard enough to get them to read the number, you know? As an avid public library user, I really appreciate the stickers. Uh, <laughs> we users get used to our favorite stickers yeah. too. Yeah. They're a lot easier to just ignore the call number. Like, just give me a shelving location so I know when the catalog, where to go. And then use stickers. And it's also cheaper because you don't have to reprint all of those. <laughs> I've worked in libraries where they decided they wanted to change it and they were going to reprint like 
all of the call numbers for their journals. And I'm like, whoa, 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 wait a minute. You, no, just let's just add, you know, make a color and add that to it. And then you can change, you know, if you feel like changing it again, just change the color sticker. You don't have to reprint. Just tell everybody that what the sticker means. Because I've been in another library where they had a blue sticker for reference, but there was no sign telling you that the blue sticker was reference. And I'm like, well, how is the user supposed to know that they can't check this book out? Or what's the difference between the blue dot books and the regular books? So we also found that it was cheaper to even order custom printed stickers. Uh -huh than to print stickers ourselves so that's always yeah. that's that's usually that's sometimes a really good option too mm -hmm. yeah we use red and green tape for uh, reserve and <laughs> reference one problem i have oh and i we also have i don't know if you can see it the library symbol mm -hmm. for our mm -hmm. popular health reading collection and then i printed a sheet of butterfly pictures for our spiritual care. But sometimes the problem is uh, how to put all the labels on without covering up you know, little bits of possibly relevant information like, oh, the title. Yeah. I'll also mention that in Koha, in the tagging feature, you can use emojis, which are pictorial, and you can search on them. So if you're using a sticker in processing with some sort of recognizable thing like a, like a dog, you can use a dog emoji in Koha as a tag, and that tag is searchable. I didn't know that. How does one add tags? I can this share my screen. I don't know how to do this. This sounds oh, cool and fun. It's really cool and fun. Let me get our Koha up. And I'm helping an elementary school that when I tell them this, it's going to blow their mind. They're going to be like, oh, they'll get so excited. Okay. Are y'all seeing my screen? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm gonna search for something. Let's see, dog. Here we go, first dog. And I haven't done this in a while, so I'm gonna flail a little bit. Let's see. I know we turned on tagging. I think it's only in the OPAC, Heather. Oh, thank you. Let's go to our OPAC. And I will log in. Tags, here we go, add tag. And system preferences have to be turned on. And I can, I can type in the tag dog and add it. I can also click the happy face and can add any of the emojis. Like dog and add it, then I believe I'm going to have to approve the tags because we've also, yeah, we've also turned on approve them. So those are now approved. Then when I go to the OPAC and I go to our tag cloud,
You see the dog. I'm impressed. We have 19 results for emoji dog. And we also have I believe I thought we had text dog. I have to look into that. We also have wine and whale. So it's it's pretty cool. I really like it. Was that tag cloud generated automatically? No, it's human generated, okay. but we allow the patrons to add tags. I'm not sure if people have to be logged in to add a tag or not. I can look at that. I enjoy logging in because then I have access to tags in my logged in account that I've assigned. And we we love it because it allows people to add particular tags that are useful in our profession, like dandy funk, which is a type of food. And that's something really, really, really particular. And uh, also something that is like, like you can see it, an emoji, an emoji for dog. And I like those because they really stand out. And the emojis get bigger the more items have that tag, like the words get bigger the more items have that tag. We also tag for things like Nobel laureates and other prizes. Yeah, we don't have um, tags in oh, our library, and I, I don't even let people log in. But I need to reconsider. <laughs> oh, Jason put in the chat, uh, mentions that he hasn't used them, but there are some cron jobs for generating tag clouds. That's cool, Jason. Thank you. Is there a way to to edit a batch of records with the cloud, like putting them all in your cart and then adding a tag? Or does does it have to be one record at a time? I don't know, but that is a really cool question. If you could only add tags in the OPEC, set up a way to give yourself the ability to create a list, then go back into the staff client, and you could add edit from that list. Does that sound, first of all, possible, and second, like, what you want to do? I don't know. Well, you could, the tags can only be added in the OPAC. Right? So it has to be in my OPAC account. So a list or a cart would work the same. It's just, do I get those options? I've logged out right now and I'm seeing, yeah, um, we have our OPAC set that you have to log in to add the tags, but I'm not sure if that's Coho wide or just our setup. You know where the tags are stored in the Biblio record? I don't think they're actually carried in the Biblio record, but let me see. Let me pull up the manual. That's something I'm gonna I'm gonna dig around and look at, and I'll put some things in the chat. And while I'm digging around, does anybody have anything they wanted to bring to the group this month? 
Yeah, Margaret. Yeah, um, a supervisor was supposed to come to this meeting too. And I hope she, um, we had an odd thing happen yesterday. Um, we've got a lot of copies and a lot of holes on the book, The Fourth Wing. You know that one, Fourth Wing? Well, anyway, it's a really popular uh, novel and we have a lot of copies of it. And we noticed that, um, I would show you, but we fixed it. Some of them were showing in processing and on hold at the same time. There was one that was showing in processing and checked out at the same time. And we couldn't figure out what was going on there. And this morning we looked at it again and they had all been fixed except for one. But how could, how could that happen? We couldn't figure it out. Wondered if anybody else had ever heard of anything like that. Uh, we have a, a ticket open with Bywater for this because we had the same thing and we're new so we don't understand the exact workflow. Um, and what Bywater said to us was like we were noticing items are still in processing but they're checked out to patrons. And what they said to us was that we needed to check in the items first before circulating them. And that is the workflow we've always told our staff to do, but apparently they were just skipping that part and just checking it out to the patron. And it really needs to, when you're done processing it, you have to check it in to remove the in-processing status and start to fulfill the hold. If you check Wait. it out, we do. Uh, we do okay. that. We always do that. Then, then that's probably what our staff is doing too. And we're noticing the same thing, but that is what Bywater told us. Um, but our staff definitely said items are in processing, but they're checked out to the patron. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we, we run into the same problem and I always just assume that it's that stuff's not getting taken, but I'll have to look at it a little closer to see if there, there's some other problems there. Well, I'm glad we're not the only ones. Thanks, y'all. And if anyone learns more about this, please share. I think part of this and pretty much any SIG or co meeting is to emphasize we're not the only ones having that problem. One never really is the only one. And that's the same with questions. There's always someone else with the same question. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Just wanted to say a quick hi and uh, perhaps bring you up to speed on how I'm doing. Um, yes, I'm happy please. To say that I'm, I'm coming along slowly. Uh, preparing the data on my pieces and books I'm planning to import to Koha. And I'm almost done with um, the thesis and dissertations for this year. And I was wondering um, if I have information on um, the lecturer who was a mentor for the student. Um, where should I put in that information? Should it go into the 700 tag or somewhere else? That's an interesting one. I think the 700 is certainly appropriate and a uh, subfield E can be used for a relator term to for the role of the person. Thank you. 
Um, I don't know if the field I relationship information. Uh, have to name in field subfield A and subfield I mentor. I'm clicking off to the Mark bibliographic format because I because we are talking Mark twenty one. Uh, let's see. I'm going to put this field into the chat. This is the general information for personal names. And it has more specific subfield information. The subfield I relationship information is the designation of a relationship between the resource described in the 7xx field and the resource described in the 1xx. It may be an uncontrolled textual phrase or a controlled textual value. Interesting, Fred. If the resource in this case would be a name or a person. Mm -hmm. Their example, um, I'm going to put this. Makes sense, but never thought of a resource being a person. Mark can be used to catalog people. Um, oftentimes, uh, say you've, or I've seen it used, say you've got a database or you, a subset of, say, experts at your institution who are available to the media to discuss certain issues, then that can be searched by subject area to pull up the people. Or, yeah, for available mentors. That would be interesting. I think yes, I just... And also we sometimes get queries from students interested in seeing um, which which works have been, which students have been mentored by a certain professor, because they might be interested in asking them for mentorship or for some advice. Mm -hmm. Oh, and this rant should probably be in the sysadmin uh, big, but uh, Aida, I just want to make your comment about um, your university want to use a centralized system and they've spent a lot of money on something that doesn't work. Um, part of the fallacy of sunken costs, uh, if you're in a hole, stop digging. Other rule. Um, yeah, library software, and I've had this argument with my institution. Library software does something that no other software can really do well. I mean, no, I can't do this in WordPress. You need something that has these capabilities, including getting to cataloging, searching on subjects, and searching on names. That's true. That's true. Um, if nothing else, I intend to continue working on the pieces and import them into Koha because they don't yet exist in the in-house catalog. So uh, if, um, if that's the choice, then I will have Koha as a separate system for thesis and dissertations and continue using the uh, the in-house catalog for the books. And I'm hoping that in the future, once they see um, 
how how much better Koha is, um, they're going to say, okay, so let's think about moving everything to Koha. Just keep repeating over and over. Koa works. Yes. And there's a huge community to help people. Ah, and Jason was just really helpful. I put into the chat, I don't know where the tags are stored. And Jason says, I think they're stored in this table. And he put in a link and, oh, the tags index table. Yes, thank you so much. Does anybody have anything else they'd like to bring to the group? I recently found discovered a system preference in relation to all the joy linking fields. Yes, linking fields. Woo! <laughs> um, does anyone use the system preference show component records? Okay. I'm looking. I'm, I think it's at all. The problem I have with show component records and easy analytics is they only work with the 773 field. That's what I run into. Cause I'm like, oh, I'd love to turn that on. That looks really, I like it. It, it moves. Um, your search results to the the items record tab instead of the bibliographic record which i find a lot easier to find you know i'm looking for this long list of barcodes what are they and then it can show me but it only we, works for the seventh century. we don't have it turned on it's it's not standard uh, uh -huh. it, but this is a great example of something Koha does that, you know, and just because mm -hmm. something's not standard now doesn't mean it's not going to become yeah. standard. Uh, mm -hmm. the, the standard uh, approach right now is that when you have an analytic component record, it carries a link to its parent very typically an article in something or a chapter in something and it links to the parent the parents the parent has not is not a standard link to the components so if you're searching in worldcat.org you you will not tend to see the last time i looked again this could be changing because things are always changing uh a link to the children so we haven't turned it on but yeah it it works in the seven seven threes and yes fred infinitely configurable let me put a link to the mark field And yeah, 773 is host item entry. And I, I'm not opposed to turning it on. <laughs> It's, it's something I just haven't explored, haven't played with. So if it would be helpful for you, Lauren, I can turn it on. <laughs> well, what I'm trying to, um, we dug a little bit deeper in the manual and it says, don't have this turned on if you have easy analytics or use control number. 
Ah, we use control number as the link in our linking entry field. So, okay, that's probably why we don't have it turned on. We do not use Easy Analytics because I'm our only cataloger and I find just a regular analytic easy to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I use control number. I love how it allows me to use all of the linking fields and not just the 773. However, there are things that easy, I love how easy analytics allows you to see the item record on both the parent and the child record. I like how it shows up so that if the items on the child, I know the volume information <laughs> Well, that record because it points to the parent and the parent I have a long list of all the the volume so I can get to the information both ways the show components is nice because it opens a separate tab with the search results that I can now um, rearrange the order I could arrange it by title I could do it by copyright date I could do it by call number so depending on what you're searching, that would be really helpful. But again, it's only for the 773. So I was wondering if some people had tried it, if they needed other fields in addition to the 773, or do they just put them all in the 773? You know, electronic books and print books are in the 773 instead of additional format which is where ours all were that way and we've separated them out because of the the display it it, it understand it's easier to understand when it says other format and then you can put electronic but or you know for online version and then the title versus the 773 just has in and the title. It doesn't give you that flexibility of what. Well, all, all, the linking, of the other. All, all the linking entry fields have a uh, default description, which can be turned on or turned mm -hmm. off. The 773, you can, when you're using the indicators, indicators are important. I, I want that on t-shirts. Uh, the indicator mm -hmm. controls whether the default description is turned on or turned off. So again, for the 773 that we're talking about, uh, the first indicator zero says display note, and that'll turn on the, it'll turn on the display of in, or you could I'm, I'm sorry, I haven't had enough coffee today. The first indicator is display note or do, do not display note. That controls display or not display of the whole field in the notes area. The second indicator is blank. It's going to say in. If it's eight, it's not going to display that in. And then you can use some free text if you're going kind of off book. Um, but, you know, all, all the 7, 7x to 7, 8x linking entry display fields have these default descriptions for what they're used for. And we use them because again, they're, they're standard, users are used to it because they match from system to system to system to system and in worldcat.org. And then also we link on control number because we don't want the link on the uh, title or any of that other information in the field because it's going to then be searching on things like newsletter, register, annual report, and that's that's not going to be specific enough. So we use the control numbers to get from the the one record to the other record exactly. Okay. <laughs> Yes, Fred, indicators are important when make a great t-shirt. You can use it to spot the catalogers in the crowd. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, Heather, I think at a future conference, you and I need to do a um, session on linking fields. And we can call it indicators are important. <laughs> oh my gosh, it writes itself. <laughs> Right. Okay. I guess 2024. <laughs> so does anyone else have anything they'd like to bring to the group? Well, <laughs> doesn't really have anything to do. Well, it sort of has to do with indicators because I've never used them. I'm in the author's catalog. Um, I know Heather's turning pale and clutching at her curls. Uh, but uh, in this morning's comic strip of the day, uh, Peterson had a. Um, a cartoon with someone who had their iPhone flashlight on and didn't know how to turn it off. That is, there are all sorts of things my phone does that I don't know how to undo, not because I'm old and stupid, but because I don't care enough to bother finding out. I can that get along sound... with that indicators in this. <laughs> that does sound applicable too certain more arcane features of Mark. Or to life in general. Mm -hmm. So we could we could uh, we could all bring our cataloging vibe to 2024 Koha conferences. Maybe uh, get people interested in caring about things like indicators tagging, processing. They come in with a tattoo on my arm that says question the authority file. Yes, authorities. And on the other arm, AACR2 rules. Yes. Temporary tattoo. <laughs> Child of ISBD. <laughs> we can get like the RDA punks. Uh, there was a parade in DC uh, many years ago, sort of an odd parade, and they interviewed someone at the Library of Congress said, yeah, we could have a precision push cart drill team and chant the LC system. Yes. LC represent. Well, does anybody have anything else? Cohab related, cataloger related, comic book related. Hey, Dino, I'm going to add the rest of my cartoon book collection to the Cheerful Valley Public Library. Any day now. And two adventures, maybe three adventures of the Avenging Chicken. Well, I think I will go ahead and stop the recording. <laughs>